No, I've got push continue. Perfect. Hi, Vincent. So, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thank Brilliant. you. I'm good, thank you. Um, so, we are going to talk today about your lockdown journal, and hopefully everyone who's watching this will be about to view your lockdown journal. So, first of all, could you introduce yourself, please? Yes, I'm Vincent Matthews. I am an artist. I'm also a curator for the Society of Graphic Fine Art, which is a drawing society, and I'm also part of the Pure Arts um, team helping to put up the shows and exhibitions. Yeah, very critical member of the Pure Arts team and long-standing. I think you're the longest standing member of the Pure Arts team, apart from me. That's right. <laughs> apart from me. So, and you've been with me since like 2010, haven't you? That's right. Yeah, and you, and when did you join the SGFA? How did that um, timeline I work? I think, well, I got to know about the SGFA really through Pure. I was at yeah. a private view and Marina Kim said, um, well, Will, who was president of, of the Society at the time, was going to have a drawing day in Rye and they were meeting at a gallery. Why don't you come along? I said, I can't just turn up. I must ask Will. Well, it's only polite. So I asked Will. He very generously said, yes, do come along. So I went and sat on, uh, on the mud in, uh, in the rice salts by the riverbank, sketching uh, boats and things with the uh, members of the SGFA. And we all clicked and found we were very much kindred spirits. And that's how I got to know of them. And uh, I exhibited with them a couple of times before I was nudged to apply to be a member. So I think I've been a member since 2012. Yeah, so you've been a member for quite a while, haven't you? And then you've gradually um, become more intrinsic and you're part of the hanging team and then on the council and now the curator. That's right. So it's a slow process. I started as associate uh, member, then became full member and invited onto the council and I was often helping with putting up the exhibitions. Mm. And I think and that's the thing that people need to understand that they think that we've always been who we are today because we have this present bias don't we as humans but yet there is no such thing as overnight success you it's overnight and one oh it's a long time and then one night <laughs> right. you get it, there it, you get there. Burn. That's right yeah. it's a slow burn mm. and it, it goes up and down yeah and you change directions as you go yes i think that's another really important thing to say is that it's not linear so you might be going one way and then you think oh no that's not quite how i wanted it to be so you just have to like rudder slightly to another direction and then yeah and you weave your way eventually to where you, you sure, feel and, you know it's like my drawing got me into etching and it also got me into engraving which influenced how i sketched and now how I do my big ink drawings. So I've now moved on to big ink drawings and through the lockdown period started adding colour to them and then through doing your back to basics course got buzz for oil painting and so it's it's like a natural progression. Yeah yeah it's an evolution isn't it it's an evolution and we're going to talk about this lovely painting behind you but first of all because people have come here to look at your journal is we're going to talk about the lockdown journal. How did that happen? How did that come about? Well, it came about really that uh, I live on my own with my dog, as you know, and we were very much told to stay at home. And I usually go out sketching. I like working outdoors, sketching from life, and then I use that material for my artwork. And, uh, and I thought, well, what am I going to do? And my work was still going, but it was quieter, my paid work. And uh, so I thought, well, I'd do um, a daily sketch. I'll sketch an everyday item, either from the house or the garden, related to my day and uh, and so as it progressed each day progressed, it also became really a diary and then Annie Catford said well why don't you try the Kent Creatives they're doing this that lockdown of course so you said the same too encouraged me so I got involved on that and it became addictive so uh, I ended up doing 110 sketches in lockdown one 110 sketches 110. Was that pretty much from the beginning of lockdown one to the end of lockdown one, do you think? It was pretty close. I think the, the actual official lockdown, something like the 23rd of May, and I sort of started really around about the 4th or 5th of April. Yeah, so quite, quite near the beginning. And then you finished it pretty much as we came out of that lockdown, didn't you? That's right. 
and also yeah. it was becoming it was coming it was very addictive it was becoming a thing where i had pressure because i was posting it up every day on my facebook page and everyone seemed to be sitting there waiting for the next sketch you know? <laughs> yes yeah i think it did become a bit of a thing didn't it and i had to gently persuade you pulled your fingers off going it's okay you can stop now <laughs> very kindly just you can stop now i think i had to do with that with quite a few artists when they it, because it gave it it very much became the thing that kept you going didn't it the motivation to keep you getting it up every did. day it did I and mean, i did an awful lot of ink drawings as well at the time i think i produced something like 30 to 40 pictures over that whole year from that period um and my sketches gave me a lot of reference but it was very good. I found it actually helped me a lot. It wasn't just helping me artistically, it was helping me mentally and emotionally. It was giving me a focus to my day and it was keeping my hand in and my drawings changed as I was sketching. I was starting to use more pigment liners, less pencil and starting to use watercolour washes and sometimes a bit of crayon as well. So I was changing and evolving naturally, just doing the daily diaries. Isn't that amazing how just something we do every day, the consistency and continuity of that leads to a change and a natural evolution in our style and, and what we want to achieve at, at the end of it. I think so. I think that's why it's so important as a fine artist. I know we have to juggle things like income and juggle things like well, a lot of people with children and family as well, other commitments. But really, if you want to grow, and uh, evolve as an artist you need to give it the time it needs yeah you can't good. just do a bit here and there you've got to say one day a week is not enough no consistency it's the thing that we do every day that will change our lives not the thing that we just dip in and out of and that Absolutely. definitely came to bear with this lockdown journal didn't it so the items that you chose you started writing as you say you drew an item and then wrote a little bit about your day how did you go about picking the item that you were going to do? Well, it's, it became more and more of a challenge as time went on. Um, but it sort of started quite easily, really, because um, I was doing work at the beginning, so I was drawing my drawing implements. And I was even drawing my drawing. And, <laughs> and then it was the start of Zoom meetings, so I then thought, right, OK. I, and our crowdcast meeting, so I started sketching that as well. It's sort of things that stood out in my day mostly, and then the bit with a vacuum cleaner. I've always been fascinated by uh, machinery, and it's quite a sculptural shape as well, my vacuum cleaner, uh, because I usually have a cleaning lady, and she couldn't come, so I had to do it myself. And my dog actually hates vacuum cleaners, and he was giving me a real glare that day, I remember. And it was quite a challenge to draw, because I, I always try to pick an interesting perspective to draw from. Um, so it's quite a challenge to draw, but it, it, it kept me motivated, and it kept me challenged as well. I find um, a lot of people say, oh, well, you need to experiment, try different things, but it's actually, it's, to me, it's more about, not just play, it's about setting myself a challenge. Yes, pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and stretching yourself to see what you can achieve. That's right. And then some of my architectural background came in when I was sketching the, the washing machine and all the palaver around it and sketching the sitting room with the TV because that's what I was doing that evening. Um, yeah, I particularly yeah. love the one in the journal that is the um, fire surround with all the cards and everything. Oh, yes, that was my big birthday that was uh, and that was one hell of a day um because my stepfather who lived over the road at the time um he disappeared and then i had his son phoning me on the walk he said well where, where's, where's he gone you know where he is i don't know can you go and have a look so i dread to think what i was going to find <laughs> and it was like the marie celeste is like the lights were on the shower about being used and everything was there as if someone was living there but there was no one there and um, so we lost half a day trying to find him. Turned out, as we thought, a friend of mine said, an ambulance turned up early hours in the morning, went in your direction, right? And uh, so we asked his neighbour, who could have easily told me, oh, he was rushed to the hospital, half past four, suspected heart attack. 
I know could have told you that, couldn't he? To reassure he's, everybody, he's fine now. <laughs> that's right. He thought he could phone me. Well, firstly, he's no good with his mobile phone, and he'd left it. I know, because I've seen it's on the charts in his kitchen. He hasn't got it with him. And secondly, if you are having a, a heart attack or an angina attack, anything like that, um, you're not going to think of picking up the phone, are you? It's going to be the last thing you think about is to phone somebody. So yeah, that was a day. So that and and you wrote all about that in this journal, didn't you? You wrote all yes. about those and experiences. I had, and I had a lovely birthday lunch in a in a nearby pub, which was all pre-booked with an old friend of mine who's also a very good client, very nice client. Gave me a couple of really lovely books. One I'm still reading. It's a fantastic art book. And uh, so I had lunch. So that sort of made my day a bit more interesting um but yeah it was a big birthday that was really quite bizarre wasn't yeah. any way we expect to spend it. i think we've all had one birthday and some people have had two birthdays in lockdown now haven't they so right. yeah, we've all had one but there's a lot of people who have had significant birthdays as you say and are looking forward to like i know we're all looking forward to celebrating some of these big events again in the future and it'll be really lovely to look back at those images and think about you know how we experienced it in a time that we had never expected or anticipated in our lifetime never knew that That's this right. was going to be a thing um do you think you'll ever come back to do another journal like this i think i will um well we've had some discussions and this project still burning away in my mind i keep finding more and more places that i'd like to go and sketch and then from there take an old ruin and develop the idea of what that could have been like yeah. not necessarily how it was but what it could be like yeah so more surreal kind of fantasy kind of thing that's right yeah so and that's that's cool. been motivated by doing this daily journal it has and uh, also having done your back to basics course which yeah. um, was very useful particularly with the i mean we went the initial bit of why we're doing things there, but the making bit with the painting clicked me in Mm -hmm. and uh and with my artwork actually although i've been using my sketches that i've done from life um i have been playing them i take a lot of artistic license in them, leaving things out make things a bit bigger move things around a bit to make the picture interesting so it was a very much a natural progression to the direction i'm now going with my oil painting yeah so that this journal that people are looking at has inspired your oil painting as well as doing the foundation pure foundation course so Talk to us about the piece that we can see behind you, because this is a work in progress, isn't it? Oh, it is. It's taken me a while to do. I don't know how much of the picture you can actually see. see yeah, one. quite right. a lot. Yeah, take it up a bit. That's it. Perfect. We can see lots of it now. Yeah, yeah see so, all the um, painting. This is, again, from imagination. Um, the only thing I had to look out for reference for was the old band. And that I sketched, but it wasn't even like that because the perspective was all different. So I sketched that. And uh, so I've now discarded what I looked at. It's all from up here. But yeah. everything, there, everything in this picture is from imagination. So it's a, it's a classical gatehouse. And uh, so I've had to mute the background. So give it background. And then I've got this foreground with much more going on. And then this is going to be a very, um, this is going to be a hedge. And I've got an iron gate that's going to go in there, which is going to be wrought iron, and then this van, and of course a couple of traffic cones. That's what I love the traffic cones, and that's <laughs> so symptomatic, so symbolic of what you were doing in your um, in this lockdown journal that people are going to be looking at because it's got so many nuanced detail in it. And I wonder, would you consider putting writing in some of these paintings, like a, you know, just like a little bit of like the story, like you have done in your journal? I could uh, I could do a bit of writing to go with it. Yeah. When post it up, because this yeah. is the second the second one, because you you know the other one. Yes. Um, yes. And uh, so this is the second one. It's taken me a while to do, but I'm enjoying it. They've got um, a very much a Hockney feel to them as well. Well, do it's quite interesting. I, um, I've had that said to me about three times lately about my paintings that I'm quite hot. I actually do like a lot of his work. And I think in some ways I've got some things in common with him, especially now he's deaf. Um, yeah. And I know in the conceptual art world, they was frowned upon Hockney and anyone doing anything figurative or painting. That's old fashioned. 
but I don't care. It's, it's to me, it's about being true to yourself and doing what you click with. Absolutely. Um, it's not about badges. It's not about conforming to them because that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, I no, got no. trained up with that. Yeah. It's about um, creating your own language. I think that's what I'm so impressed with. Um, David Hockney about is that as he's grown older and you know some physical um, limitations have come in and he hasn't been able to do the massive paintings and everything he's gone very much down that digital road and that's been really inspiring to show that you can evolve and find a new language for yourself and that's definitely what we're seeing through this journal experience that it's taken you down this new path that you're exploring a new language for yourself you know like we're looking at that underpainting the red is that a normal color you would put in as an underpainting color i would quite often if it's a landscape it's quite common practice uh many many years ago i went to a workshop for one day it was with a with a tumbies wells art society who I, I wouldn't normally have much to do with but I, I met quite a few friends there and they were very small and i turned up and i had an art box paint splattered t-shirt, I never met anyone, <laughs> didn't know any of them. and the only place left was in the middle of a room and they're all looking around going, hello, we've got someone serious here. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I was uh, painting this building and it, it wasn't my best picture but um, the, the chap doing it was very good and his tips about underpainting etc and he came up to me and uh, he said to me, well I'll tell you what, he said, if you're going to become a professional artist don't get married, he said. It wrecked my <laughs> mind because I just spent all my time painting. So, so, oh, all right. <laughs> That's um, so funny. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Don't get married. Top tip from a painting course, don't get married. And funny enough, I never have. <laughs> you never have. You took him at his word. <laughs> but he was the one who mentioned the red, was he? He was the one who I said about... And I also learned a lot of city lit, I did a lot of painting courses there uh, in life painting where you have to mix the colours and work from life. Um, but the beauty, if you've got a lot of green in the colour and you've got some areas where you're going to have some red, what it does, it, because I can't stand painting on a white canvas. No. You always do, and a lot of impressions you do is where they used to dirty their canvas. Some people yes. use a very light, you put a light wash on. Um, but the red is, is the complementary colour to green. So, yes, so yes. all the colours you paint in oil, unless you put it on really thick and opaque with white in it, um, the colours come through. So it, it mutes it and it complements it. So then if I was to put the red on that cone, that red's going to stand up. Yeah. But yeah. you have to try and kill off as much of that colour as possible, quickly as you can, because it can be a bit distracting sometimes. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> I can imagine. So that's amazing. So this has been, this journal that people are looking at, I mean, it's been really transformative for you and your art practice. And you're saying, you know, you would consider doing that kind of thing again. What do you think has been the biggest learning, the biggest transformation for you from doing the lockdown journal? I think, I mean, apart from the, the pretty big one is introduction of colour to my work. Yes. I'm doing a lot of black and white, so I'm using much more colour. And a lot of people didn't realise that I'm actually a colourist. I love mixing colours and I'm, I like muting colours. That's one of the big but I think the biggest thing was it taught me that, uh, wow, this is really what I want to do full time. So now with the new structure in my life, the design has become subsidiary to my art. Isn't that amazing? And, and I'm being very firm. I don't do any any design beyond Tuesday. That's incredible. So lockdown, not only just doing the journal, which has reinforced that in your mind, but lockdown has enabled you to really shift your life into what you truly want it to be. That's right. And, and it's something I'd always wanted to do it, but it, and, you know, I was having these strong feelings more and more in lockdown. That I'd had enough of being bounced from pillar to post and always conforming to other people's deadlines on and a lot of the time when you question a the deadline they can't give you a reason for it it's because it's someone's whim and it's unfair on me because I then get dumped on it and then it's my mm. problem then they change their minds they expect it so all through the week and I was averaging two days a week which is the most that I want now mm. I'm quite happy on one day a week um, it yeah. was disrupting my flow and a friend of mine was saying I can't believe how much you've grown in the last uh, few months for this and you, you know you're even thinking of your girl and you think of your house I said because my brain was always chock-a-block 
with design problems and deadlines. I, could, I never felt free. Whereas now I'm feeling freer. I come in here, as I spent nearly all day painting on this today. I had my jab on Wednesday, which knocked me for six. Oh. So I lost, I lost uh, a lot of Wednesday and I lost half a day yesterday, but I still couldn't resist to come in and do something. So, I think um, that's really important what you've just said about flow. I think people who, and that's again with the journal, is doing something consistent. If you try and flit from task to task during the day, you will inhibit the amount that you can get done because your brain just can't cope with that. Whereas if you just stick to one thing, you'll get into flow and you'll get so much more done. But also, if you're being creative, I've often had this conversation in the design world with a very, very nice person that I work with. I get very well with this person. And I'm always saying, look, if everything's always super urgent, the creative side of it goes out the window. You're just going to get more of what you've done before because that works. Whereas if you're not multitasking, which is terribly bad for one, um, it creates scatterbrains, it makes it hard focus. I couldn't focus for a long time. I couldn't even read a book because my mind was all over the place. Um, so now I've calmed down, I'm enjoying the slower pace of life. I'm finding I can be more creative, so I'm using my imagination for this. Yeah, your and brain is isn't your, your, your brain isn't being flooded with stress hormone that creates brain fog, basically. That's right. So you've taken out the, the you've reduced the amount of stress hormone flooding your brain, which means that now you've got all the maximum ability to use your whole brain muscle and create this amazing work. And I think that's that's so inspiring to anyone who's going to look through this journal that to see that that regular task, daily task that you've done has led to this and has led to you changing, making new decisions about your life and changing the way you live your life, which has ultimately led you back to painting. It has, it's, and, and strangely enough, um, although I've drawn all my life, um, I mean, I did my first oil painting commission at 16, as you know, of a, a dog I didn't particularly like, it was a great day. <laughs> um, and that was one of the things that got me into art college along with my drawings. And so I used to do oil painting from the age of 14. So it's always been another side of me, but it got pushed on the back burner a lot. You know, a lot of my art got pushed on the back burner with my design. I had a wonderful career, but it's very, very uh, absorbing. Yeah. It completely absorbs you, completely yeah. takes you over. And so my art went on the back burner. And when I rediscovered my passion in 2003, went to City Lit, that was it. I uh, didn't care that I was walking everywhere in paint splattered t shirt and jeans, you know. I was loving what I was doing. I was actually buzzing. I reconnected, and that was painting, live painting. And, uh, and even during one of the live painting courses, it was actually self portrait head. Uh, I had a tutor from Goldsmiths who stopped me twice at various times, of course, saying, um, Vincent, you should be doing this full time. Yeah. So that's the ambition, isn't it? That's the ambition to be doing this full time and exhibiting your work. So although you're part of the SGFA, the Society of Graphic Fine Art, we're, I think we're going to have to look for somewhere where you're going to be able to show these paintings very, very soon because you're, right. you're going to get a collection. But that's OK. Perfect problem to have. More than happy to try and solve that kind of problem. Well, that's thank you. Well, it's good issue. as an artist. Good as an artist not to just have one thing. Too often people just focused on doing, well, I'm just going to do this. And you can't because you've got, as an artist, you've got to evolve. Yeah, everybody's individual, aren't they? And I think everybody can, can cope with what they can cope with. And I just think it's, it's so inspiring what you have done through this lockdown period and what this journal represents is that that tra it's showing the evidence of the transition from what you were, as you say, the pencil drawing black and white to now the colorist and the painting. I think it's, it's incredibly inspiring. And I hope lots of people will look at this journal and be inspired to start their own journal or start their own project, daily project that will take them on their own journey to find their way, find their pathway through. Right. So what do you think, you would like to do with the journal drawings? Do you have an ambition for where these journal drawings might go or will they just always stay in a journal? I love them in the journal because it's a very personal, 
thing. I mean, we've toyed with the idea of making of making a book out, and this is one possibility yeah. in the future. I don't know. I'm perhaps I always remember a tutor telling me this, City Lit, and he's so right. He says, with artists, their sketchbooks are very precious because they're, it's not just reference material, it's part of them. They don't do their sketches in sketchbooks to sell. They yeah. do them because it's what they do, it's who they are, it's expressing them, their thoughts, putting them on paper. So it's, I, I, I find it a form of vandalism to cut the sketches out of a book. Oh, I, I think it would hurt me if you started doing that. I would be personally, right. I would so, feel the pain. <laughs> so, I would hurt yeah. me as much as you. I, yes, yeah, so staying in the book format and we'll see. We'll see where they take you, but you have no, um, no aspiration with them at the moment, apart from as a record, a historical record, really. That's right. I have done one or two pictures uh, based on the those sketches so I'm still thinking I might use some of those as reference points for future artworks and um, like the bin lids in the hedge that came from the sketchbook and then I yeah. took some artistic licenses which is what you do as an artist um, and you know and then there was another one too uh, that I did which was the, the fork fork handles as I called it um, but they said a lot of those came from those sketches that I did I thought yes. mm, that might make an interesting picture. So Indian ink and watercolour washes. So people need to look at these sketches and then it's going to be a bit of like one of those Where's Wally books. They've got to then look and see where these individual items appear in other artworks or paintings in the future. They'll be going, oh, there's the Hoover. <laughs> it right. appeared it in might well end up, you know, I might one day do a, a room with uh, as a conversation piece with some figures in and to be someone using the vacuum cream. You I think that sounds amazing. <laughs> I love that idea that all of these stay in the sketchbook, but they suddenly appear in a future painting. And I like that the, uh, the fire mantle with the card suddenly appears in another painting. I think that's just, that would just be so amazing. Well, what I love about the way that I work for me is I'm not working from photos. No. I mean, very rarely, if, if ever I have to refer to a photograph, it's literally because I have no choice. But I, the reason why I like working from sketchbooks from life and observation is it's my interpretation I see. It's not pretending to be a photograph. It's not influenced by a photograph. It's my experience of it. And then you can use that whichever way you want to use it. It's being creative. It's going back to the days before photography, really absolutely that that becomes your reference material but it is as you say it's your emotional response to the situation as opposed to what may have actually been factually in front of you you can decide to move the picture a bit to the left and That's put right. the dog to the right if you want to it it's yours you own it well turner was famous for it i mean i did um, a pencil drawing of rice salt years ago and subsequently i did an etch now, I went down there twice to do the sketch, went and sketched it, and then I made a study of the river, and then I did this very detailed, with lots of pencil marks, and then this very strong uh, acridity. And um, people recognised where it was, they all knew where it was, but they didn't realise I'd moved a bollard here and I'd moved that there to make it work with my picture. Yeah. And they still recognise it. I did a Dungeness painting, oil painting years ago, where using my sketchbooks again and using one or two references, I just moved everything around and I did a turner. I put them all in one picture. In reality, they were all far apart. But everybody straight off to, oh, that's Dungeness, isn't it? So it's quite weird. If people associate them, not necessarily literally how they are, they associate them by certain um, elements that they see. Yes, it's just that. Really that yes, exactly. That, and that's the beauty of being an artist. That's the, the thing about being an artist is artistic license that you can do that. And, and it's up to you what they look like. And if people respond to it, that's amazing, isn't it? And if people really? enjoy what you do and then they want to buy it even better. If that's... Well, they look at, they look at the artists over the time. I mean, obviously Picasso is a great example. But you could even look at Matisse's work and, and the Moroccans. Now, if you look at the Moroccans, people go, well, and I remember doing this as an uh, uh, art history on my fine art course. Now, what do you think that meant? You know, what do you think of this picture? Everyone say, well, what's that mean? And I'm looking at it. 
I don't see any meaning in it at all. That's just a painting of Morocco. And he said, got it in one. Because paintings don't have to have all these intellectual meanings. They can just be an artist expressing himself. And it was like a holiday poster for him. He's got his Moroccan suit. And again, it's him being creative. Yeah. We've got a we've got a world at the moment obsessed with copying photographs, and it's not in my mind what my work's about. It's, but um, it, for some artists, that's what they want to do, isn't it? And everybody's at liberty to, as you've just said, everyone's at liberty to take their own artistic license and decide how it works for them. Right. But not everything has to have a deep subliminal meaning, as you say. You know, the the beautiful painting that you're painting behind you. Is something out of your imagination and that is the essence of what it is it is but also it's got a sort of story in it in a way yeah. because people can make their own story up like they did with my last one people were imagining wildlife in my last one they were you know so i'm imagining postman pat in that van and well, his, and quite, his yeah, cat quite yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the gatehouse with the kind of like bird, is it like a clock tower on top? Yeah, it's got a little clock tower, little cooper yes. on the top. I love with a that. Lead, with a red roof. And this is going to have slate tiles on, and I'm going to have a proper stone portico on. Um, and I'm going to put floral stuff over this side, and some floral stuff in there. And then there's an iron gate to go on there. Because I, I have this thing about glimpsing through. Like my last painting, I like the idea of glimpsing through. My next one might be a big hole in a hitch, glimpsing through the hitch. It's yeah. this thing where you can't actually physically go there, but you can see it. It's a bit of voyeurism in a way. Yes. But it, it plays games with your imagination. Yeah, I love the storytelling. And I think that's when people are reading the journal, I think that's what they get. They get the storytelling, don't they? So I hope everybody really enjoys looking through your journal and sees how this journey has gone. And then look in the gallery as well on Vincent's website, because you'll probably, by the time you're looking at this, um, watching this film, some of these paintings will have already appeared in his gallery. And also read his blog post, because Vincent talks to us a lot in his blog post about the evolution of his um, techniques and his thought processes, etc. So yeah, have a good look around Vincent's website once you've had a look at this journal and you'll learn a lot more. And if you're motivated to buy, then you can go in the store and buy some of his work or come to one of the exhibitions and see his work. Thank you so much, Vincent. Thank you. Thank you. And um, that's been great. And I hope everyone really enjoys watching this, uh, watching this film and looking through your journal.